Welcome to Tanakh Talk. I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, USA, with a returning new episodes, <laughs> testimonials, uh, changed the name a little bit, Mem- uh, Monday Memoirs, there you go, so it had to make sense. So today you're going to hear a great testimony of Danielle Gershani, so very, Daniela, pardon me, got that wrong there, and so it's been a great uh, a great journey getting to this point. A lot of people have been asking me about this for quite some time. And so I'm glad we're finally able to get this back going again. So uh, I just want to say thank you uh, so much, Daniela, for uh, for being willing to come and join us here. And um, it's uh, it, it can be nerve wracking whenever you, uh, especially for those who have just come out of the uh, come out of the church. And now we don't know you. Now I ha- I'm I'm having this habit that I'm creating that um, I only wanted to know, like I told Danielle, just a tiny bit about your best. So what you're fixing to hear. Uh, for the first time uh, with her testimony. I'm also going to be hearing this for the first time myself on most of the stuff here. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this ride because uh, it's definitely been a journey for all of us. And uh, we're fixing to hear Miss Danielle. Danielle, please say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. How are you? So t- t- tell us a little bit about your uh, your your family life growing up. Where was your, where you, did you did you get raised in the church? Were you raised secular and then got saved? How, how, how did all that work? Absolutely. So I was, I was born into a very, very religious family. So um, my father was raised Catholic originally and at a very young age converted to Christianity, got saved. Um, they became youth pastors and full-time, you know, pretty much in ministry um, full-time. My mom was the, the church secretary and the head of the praise team. And my father was the youth pastor and ran, you know, the entire youth program. So I, I pretty much grew up in a parsonage. <laughs> I was, you know, right. five, six days a week, I was in church. Wow. So, so, and this is the reason why, and, and this is, you know, my, my choice for people that I'm trying to interview uh, it's not shunning anybody who wasn't a preacher, preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's kid. It's just that I, I want to the, these stories are the ones that fascinate me the most because I've I've heard so many um, dear dear friends of mine, Christians, saying that we were just simply misled. And I'm thinking, you know, I could see if I was just a casual, you know, what what did my wife call it a C and E Christmas and Easter <laughs> Christian, if you will, yes. um, getting misled. But someone who's Say that again. I said lukewarm. As yes. Like call them, right? so yes, exactly. Once in a while. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and so you, the story with you, it's similar. I mean, it's, it's very apparent now that you were raised in church and not only raised in church, but under a very devout household of study. And, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you can't become a youth pastor or a pastor of any kind without having to go through some sort of schooling to learn this stuff. And, as any faithful parent would do, they would teach their kids, you know, why we're doing this. So your exposure to uh, the New Testament, uh, that I think that's that's a little bit more about what we want to hear about. Absolutely. Um, so I mean, I obviously I was, I was sent to church camp, and I ended up becoming a church camp leader. Uh, you know, I went to Hume Lake every year up up north in California, and you know was was actively involved. I was in missions. I went to different countries for missions trips. And so I was very, very active um, in, you know, helping people get saved and, and, and the gospel. I was, you know, I was the, the top student in memorizing the New Testament. I can quote most of it verbatim for you. Um, whenever, you know, people bring things up, I'm like, yeah, I know the verse, you know. And so that's definitely, um, Definitely, I was very, very devout, very serious about my faith from a very young age, and and just dedicated to serving God. You know, I was I was definitely not a half in, half out person in any way. Did you have uh, any what they would call supernatural experiences? I have, and people can go back and watch my testimony from way back and find out what those were. But tell us if you've had something, whether it be seeing healings or speaking in tongues or just whatever you would call a supernatural events. Right. So, so for me personally, I was, I was, I was always that person that was asking, asking God, like, if this is real, I want to experience, you know, I would see the mm-hmm. tongues and I would see people falling down. And, you know, I, I've been kind of to the array of, you know, from, from Southern Baptist kind of more traditional. And then my parents, we, we went kind of more and more 
like evangelical. And so I, I started being around that environment as a teenager, um, more with tongues and people falling over type thing. Um, and and I, I personally never spoke in tongues. I would, I would come and, you know, I'd go to the front to the altar call and they'd lay their hands on me and I was the only one still standing up. It was kind of awkward sometimes. Um, so I was, I was that person that just, and, and I went up with a fully open mind. Like, if this is real, God, like, knock me on my butt, you know. And, and I was just always that person that was still standing. Um, and then I got reprimanded, you know, oh, ye of little faith. And, right, and, and right. told, you know, that, that I wasn't saved because I hadn't spoken in tongues or, you know, lots of different, you know, depending on where I was, I was it was not always greeted with acceptance or love when I, when I didn't kind of go with that. So. Interesting. You know, I, you saying this reminds me of uh, a scenario that happened. We, we, we used to go to a mega church in Tennessee uh, called World Outreach and they had uh, at the time, at the time it wasn't like a mega, like a football stadium mega, but it was anything over like 5,000 members was considered to be a large church and it's had like 15,000 members. Yeah. And um, they actually went to, they actually hosted classes that, taught you this is not a joke that taught you how yeah. to speak in tongues and i'm thinking yeah. wait a minute what if this is really supernatural why are you having to teach me how to do it that doesn't make any sense you know absolutely absolutely yeah and a lot of people say you know you haven't been filled with the holy spirit mm -hmm. and you know all of these different things and so yeah i mean i was i was active you know my parents were at dawson McAllister conferences and, and i've been to benny hinn i you know I, you name it i've been my parents we were at every conference um you know harvest crusade every year my entire childhood um and in california so we were, we were active in all of these events so i was, I was surrounded by a lot of it but i always you know i always would question you know is this real is this you know you know, why do some people speak in tongues and why do others not? And, and I did a lot of research actually in college about it and was interested to find that when you go to different countries and they would record people speaking in tongues, that the dialect or sounds that their language didn't make, the people speaking in tongues would not be able to make that sound. So say a language didn't have the R sound in it, mm. nobody speaking tongues in that country would ever make the R sound. Interesting. Um, so it was very interesting How interesting. You know, wow. Okay, so at what point in your journey did you begin? I'm hoping I didn't cut you off. Sometimes our our voices will overlap no. each other. I apologize if I did. Totally fine. Okay. Um, at what point in your journey? Um, well, first of all, how young were you when you feel like that you were mature enough to uh, to really walk out your Christian faith as 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 like a mature person, whether it be an adult, teenager, whatever? And then and then how long it was it from that point on? to where you spent your time studying and then you began having questions of doubt. Right. So, you know, obviously being, being a pastor's kid, I was, you know, constantly like surround, you know, um, surrounded in, in, in evangelism and missions trips. And so I, I was very active, very young. Um, I was going on missions trips, probably 14, 15 years old. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, I, I was 18. I was, I was living on my own. I was in college. And, and I started going on missions trips and I started doing things kind of on my own um, at about 18. And, you know, I was, I was working at the soup kitchens and I was, you know, doing all of these things. I became very active on my own. And so for most of my 20s, um, I was very active in the church and I kept kind of trying to find my, my place, my home. I, I went to quite a few different denominations and, and I just had questions. And every, every time, every, no matter what it was, if it was, if I went Pentecostal, then this felt off. If I went here, this felt off. And, and so I just, I, I always found myself searching, I guess, for, for completeness. Because I would say, well, why aren't we actually doing what the Bible says? Right. <laughs> you know, there, there was always something that was really a contrast. Even as a kid, you know, why don't we do all of the Ten Commandments? You know, that was always really sure. confusing to me. You, you taught me to sing it and learn it and memorize it, but we don't. Do it. We don't. What is the Sabbath? And you know, why, why don't we do these things? And so those were always questions for me. Um, but it wasn't until my early 30s, I think. You know, I spent most of my 20s being very active in the church and 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 you know, um, missions trips and things like that. And it wasn't until my 30s that I really I, I started searching. I started asking questions. Um, I, I really was. I was struggling. You know, with certain things and I'd, I'd seen a, a a video from a messianic pastor that was talking about the pagan origins of, of, the, of the holidays and things like that and it kind of snowballed from there and, and I, I went through the natural progression I think that most of most of the people I've talked to you know I went through 
the 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 messianic and the Hebrew roots, and I and I kind of slowly, you know, the more the more Torah you learn, the harder it is to compute the New Testament and the Old Testament. It just it started to really really right. conflict for me, and I started asking questions, and um, I found myself kind of teetering between messianic Judaism and and going to the local reform synagogue at the same time, kind of teetering and, and asking questions and learning. And the I, I feel now that the messianic, you know, movement in itself was kind of a stepping stool for me to learn, learn the Tanakh, because previously you don't really know it. And I just sure. kept asking questions. And I, I went to every pastor I knew, and I knew a lot of them, you know, and I, I asked questions. And I said, you know, how, how do we reconcile this? Why don't we keep the Sabbath? Why are we eating pork? Why are we, why are we doing all these things? And I was, I was really confused. And um, I think a big moment for me was really as I, as I really delved back actually into the New Testament and started going through it and and asking myself, like, you know, well, who did who did Jesus say he came from, you know, for? And he said he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, right. And, and he called the Canaanite woman a dog. And I was like, wait, what? You know, I was like, <laughs> so confused. What's going on? Like, um, and, and that it was only for, for the Jews. And and then, I, you know, as the more and more I, I looked and the more and more I, I, I searched and I researched, I just had more and more questions. And so I, I went to a pastor I was very, very close with and, and sat down and I said, please, I'm having all these doubts, like, prove me wrong, show me what I, what am I missing here? Um, and, and the pastor disclosed to me that all the feasts were still real, that we were still supposed to be keeping the Torah, and all these things. And this was a Sunday, traditional Pentecostal. Wow. So this was not a messianic and, and I, leader. This was no, okay. this was wow. a, a Sunday, Sunday evangelical, has her own really? church, you know, pastor. And I just, I, I couldn't reconcile it. I kind of sat there, you know, in tears on our couch going, then why aren't we teaching this? Why, are, why aren't we teaching the truth? Why aren't we, you know, why aren't we screaming this from the rooftops? Right. And she, you know, she just said, well, that's not what people want. Mm, wow. And so that was, that was kind of where I, where I was left. And so I started, I started attending more and more messianic congregations. I went to a huge Hanukkah um, celebration um, that was, gosh, I think four or five years ago. And I, when I got there, there was, there was one person who was actually an Orthodox Jew that was present. And he was so gracious. And, and I remember looking around the room and feeling like he was the only real deal. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know, you, you're in a room right. and, and there's people doing things and dancing and, 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 and saying Shema and all this stuff. And then here was this one person and, and he was so kind and he was so patient. And I kept questioning, like, how can he, how can he be here? How can he not know my Messiah? How, how does he not get it? You know? And, and so that was kind of the, the beginning for me of questioning that, you know, this was a very educated person that, that knew Torah and knew Hebrew and I didn't. And so that, that led me to the door of a, a reform synagogue to learn Hebrew and to learn to translate myself, you know, things nice. and, right. and, and learning. <coughs> Very good. Bless you. And so I was, I was really quiet. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was really, I was really quiet about it for a while, and you know, I was learning and studying, and and there was a group of women who were all kind of, you know, researching and and learning and trying to better understand, you know, the Torah and and what Hashem actually wanted from us and what was expected and who the new covenant was going to be with and you know all of these things. Um, and I, I found myself going to a, a, a synagogue and I was attending their their Torah classes on Shabbat and I remember a guy said he said he goes I'll never understand Christians and I was like well why <laughs> and you know and, and I'm trying to be polite and, and not be disrespectful because I was still very Christian at the time and he said I don't understand that you 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 said that we were all breaking God's law and that's why he had to send his son but because he sent his son you all get to keep sinning mm -hmm. and and I didn't have an answer to that and that was very it like it it knocked me kind of like knocked me off kilter and i was like wait a minute he's right like if if breaking god's law is why we supposedly needed you know this messiah then why why do we still sin why don't we keep the very law that he supposedly came it was you know it was a mm -hmm. lot of contradiction a lot of sure. confusion um that led me to tanak talk actually and i started yeah, watching good. rabbi tobia singer and you know, I go back and and I bought the Let's Get Biblical books, and and I and I didn't sleep for about three months, wow, and I you know, I was completely obsessed. 
right. um, and and learning and and just studying and learning and, and the mistranslations and the you know so many unanswered questions, so many. Um, and so probably after almost a year of learning, I, I went to my father, um, very worried, and and I said to him, I'm I'm going to convert to Judaism. I, I'm leaving Christianity. I've you know denounced Jesus, and and I'm I'm going to be converting. And I said, it, you know, I was prepared to be disowned by my you know my father, and he was he he was okay when I kept Shabbat, and he was okay when I stopped eating pork, but you know, denying the Messiah was a very different, you know, and I knew, I knew the ramifications, you know, where, where if you deny him before a man, he'll right. deny for the father, you know, I knew the, the severity of the, the, the words I was speaking when I came to my father. And he, you know, he said, you're going to give me time to study this myself. I'm going to show you where you're wrong and you're going to repent and you're going to come back. And so I, I made that agreement with my father, and I said, absolutely, if, if you can show me where I'm wrong, and you can, you can disprove this, absolutely, I will, I will repent, I will, I will come home, and I, we'll never have this conversation again. Very nice. And so um, three months later, my dad walked away from the church. Oh, wow. <laughs> and came to the shame. same realization, you know, and, wow. and he, he, he said to me, I... I raised you to be like the Bereans. I, I, I taught you to question. I taught you to learn. I taught you to go back and judge everything. And I was wrong. I was wrong. Wow. And it was it was a really painful moment for him because, you know, he's, he's led many people to Christ. He's, right. um, you know, dedicated his entire life to this. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a definite moment. So my parents, they both walked away. Um, from Christianity at the same time. My my other youth pastor growing up um, walked away from Christianity, and wow. we all began just learning and, and studying together. Are, are you, I'm, I'm amazed by the impact that you had on those people around you. That's absolutely brilliant. That's that's amazing. So, you know, and you that's just going to domino onto more people being led into the truth, which is really, really amazing, you know. Um, did you have... Just out of curiosity, did the um, did the way the Bible canon took place did that did that affect you in any way? Because that was a big thing for me uh, that made me really start like opening up my eyes to find out that the New Testament and the Old Testament wasn't originally you know put together by the same group of people. You know, I thought yes. I, I really thought that 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 the Jewish people had their hand in connecting the New Testament as well. Did that have an impact on you? Absolutely. So what I did. Um so simultaneously, um, I was I was researching my family's kind of family history, and I found out my father is from Mexico, his family's from Mexico, and I had found out that some of his family were forced converts from Judaism while wow. I was I was doing this family tree, and so that took me on a journey through. I'm a big history person, so I kind of went backwards in church history, and and un, undid it if that makes sense. So I, I started with. You know, you get to the 1800s and you realize that the the rapture doctrine didn't exist until you know the 1800s, and wow. there was no there was no rapture before that. And so I, I kept kind of creeping myself back, and then I get to Martin Luther and the Reformation, and then it was very shocking to me to realize like there was no Protestantism before Martin Luther. Like everything was the Catholic Church, and so the Catholic Church keeps really great records, Baruch Hashem. And so I was <laughs> able to go through step by step, all of the, the Catholic documents, you know, you, you go back through the Council of Nicaea documents, they're all available where, you know, where the divinity of Christ was argued about and, wow. and where all of these, you know, these different things um, are brought forth. Um, very, very interesting to me where, you know, you go to, you go to newadvent.org, which is the Catholic, you know, the Catholic encyclopedia essentially and it basically it talks about the fact that the the gospels were anonymously written um and later ascribed the names that were given to them and then you look at the time periods you know they were written 70 to 150 years after right. um the lifespan of Christ. and so then i started looking at what is prophecy you know prophecy is i write something down it's written down and then it comes true at a later date so that really shook me with the New Testament, seeing as, you know, I could say, I could write down 10 years from now that I'm going to have this conversation with you. Right. And we're going to 
talk about this and we're going to talk about that, but that's not prophecy. Right. Prophecy is when it was like documented before it happened. <laughs> And yes. then it happened, right? You know, and and so when when I started realizing that that the, the New Testament wasn't written until you know forty to a hundred years after he he was gone, and that we don't even know who wrote the first you know gospels, the four gospels, and you know that was really that really shook me because you know we're we're taught that it's the infallible word of God and it's perfect. You know, and, and as I as I began to delve into it and see, you know, there's over 200 discrepancies in the New Testament where, you know, they, they don't agree on what time he died. They don't agree on what day he died. Right. <laughs> they don't agree. Um, Resurrection don't date. Agree or... on, his, on his lineage. Yeah, his date, the date, his, his you know, in, in one, in one he's, a, he's a descendant of Solomon. In another, he's a descendant of Solomon's brother. Like, like everything is different. There, there's so many contradictions. Mm. And so I spent a lot of time really just digging through the New Testament. And at the end, you know, I, I wasn't left with much. And so for me, the, the, final, the final thing was I said, okay, I'm going to go back to the 365 prophecies that Christ fulfilled because this is my, this is the foundation of, right. of my faith. And so a friend of mine actually sent it. She knew I was questioning and I was being quite boisterous on Facebook as I was, you know, is this valid and is this? And so she sent me this document of the 365 prophecies that, that Jesus fulfilled. And so I went through them one by one by one. And as I had to cross them off when I realized they were out of context, like he's the seed of a woman and they go back to Genesis when they're talking about right. Adam and Eve. And, you know, one yeah. at a time, I just walked through each and every one of them. And, you know, by the end of it here, you realize that he, you know, except for possibly he wrote it on a donkey, which, right. you know, like right. that there wasn't, there wasn't right. much left standing um, in regards to him fulfilling it. And so that was really heartbreaking for me mm. to see that, um, to see the deception of the Septuagint versus the Masoretic texts. Um, and and the, the origins of the Septuagint, that was very, very difficult for me to see that they, they forced all of these um, Jewish men in and forced them to write only the Humash, only the first five books of the Torah. And then they later pegged on their translations of the Navi and the Ketuvim, all the, you know, the writings and the prophets. And that these are all later things that have right. been changed. And right. There, there was no foundation. I just found like deception after deception. And it was, it was heartbreaking because this is the, the faith I'd given my entire life and dedicated my parents and dedicated our all to. And so it was, it was really overwhelming to see that there, there wasn't a foundation. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's insane. <coughs> wow. So how would you, uh, how did you, let's see. So I'm guessing by the time you got married, uh, the person you married was already also out of the church as well. Would that be correct? Um, with my current husband, um, mm. I'm, I, I've just been married a year, so my husband is oh, Jewish. Um, yeah, Congratulations. So my husband, my husband, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I was married at the time and had two children. Um, he was a Christian, and um, we. It, I, I kind of joke that I lost both men in my life at the same time. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, <laughs> my funny. husband and Jesus, I, I lost them both uh, about the same time period. Right. Um and the more and more I, I move towards following the Torah and 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 modesty and and you know the the Jewish values that I was seeking, just the further we grew apart, and you know it became a really really unsafe and unhealthy environment. And so we ended right. up divorcing. Um, and I, I met my husband, you know, about a, about a year and a half ago, and married. So that's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. That's really great. <laughs> Well, very good. So what would be your, uh, I guess you could say your, uh, if you have any words of encouragement for people who are still in the church and maybe are slightly questioning things now for the first time. Right. So I think, I think for me, um, I would definitely recommend taking their time searching through things. So, so for me, the biggest problem I had was people telling me my question. Um, that I'm not allowed to question, you know, oh, ye of little faith and, and the guilt trips and these things. And so for me, I felt like if, if this faith that I believe in is truth, it will stand no matter what questions I ask, no matter how many things I search out, no matter how, you know, whatever it is, it's going to stand. And so I think that's as long as we're seeking truth, we're looking for truth, we're looking for, you know, 
how to serve God properly. And, and I think as long as that's our goal, I think that God will always, you know, he'll, he will guide us and he'll, and it's scary sometimes. And it's, you know, it can be overwhelming. Um, I, I now, I actually have a, a Facebook group that I work, I work with. It's healing from the trauma of leaving Christianity. And I work people through, um, some of those stages of grief because I, I I'm a grief counselor by trade. And I was seeing that many of, many of my friends leaving Christianity, it was, it was like a death. You know, we, we lost our family, we lost friends, we lost our customs, we lost our traditions, and there's a lot of grief and there's a lot of anger and, and distrust. And, you know, and so I think that's the biggest time is giving ourselves time to heal um, and, and knowing that, that God has a plan for our lives, you know, even if it's not, you know, and right. if, if someone told me I'd be an Orthodox Jew living in Israel, you know, five years ago, I would have laughed at them. Um, and just know that God has a path. And he has, you know, a, a direction. As long as you keep seeking truth, that eventually you'll find what you're looking for, whatever that, that path is, right. whether that's, you know, just being a righteous Gentile and, and loving God and, or, or conversion, you know, whatever their path is. Right. Very good. Okay. So one, one final thing. Uh, so your email address, um, high wellness yes. and healing at gmail.com. Explain the email address to us. What's yes. what, why, why that choice of email address? So I, I have um, a counseling and um, coaching business that I work in. So I'm a social worker by trade Very nice. and a certified trauma and grief counselor. And so um, as I as I began to talk to to many people living Christi- leaving Christianity, I really found that there was a big need for us to process emotionally the loss and the anger and the inability to trust. And you know, mm. I saw it manifest in itself, and, and we see it in, in some of the unhealthy kind of segues that have, that have come up out of people leaving Christianity. And so, you know, I talk about how do we interact with our family? How do we, how do we share? How do we not, you know, burn bridges? And, and so I do private sessions and I also have um, Facebook videos and chats and it's a private support group for people that are leaving, you know, maybe their spouses are still, still Christians or they're dealing with the loneliness or the isolation or, you know, maybe looking for a path to convert or looking for, you know, how to connect as a Noahide today and, and, you know, feeling alone. And so I help people process through the emotional side so mm-hmm. that whatever decision they make moving forward, they're doing it from a healthy place and, and not from a place of aggression or lashing out, you know, and, and getting rid of, I, I think the biggest thing is clearing our minds of the Western mindset. Sometimes we, we take Christianity with us, you know, the desire to evangelize or the desire to, right. you know, to, to prove a point or to, you know, impose our beliefs on others. And so that's something I also really focus on is helping people heal and, and just being at peace with where they are um, in this journey and whatever, you know, Hashem has for them. Very good. And so you guys, if you know anybody who's suffering, you know, female or male, I suppose, just look up, um, Daniela 1L. Uh, Golshani, G-O-L-S-H-A-N-I, I I think the spelling is correct on the YouTube title, Uh, and send her uh, a a Facebook message, and she can direct you to her Facebook groups uh, as well. And just remember her email address is still on your screen, uh, highwellnessandhealing at gmail.com. And so uh, I got to say, that was was pretty exciting testimony. (laughs) (coughs) Pardon me. Um, A lot of things. It's nice to see someone who went even just in my opinion, beyond um, the normal realm of study and digging deeper, even digging into uh, the, the Catholic archives and find out what kind of records they had. That's that's pretty intense. Sounds like we may have to do a show soon just on that alone, <laughs> if you're willing. So we'll talk, it's, we'll, it's incredible. There's, there's so much proof, and docu- they document it themselves. So it's wow. amazing. Insane. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for, for tuning in and watching. Be sure to share this video with your friends, uh, especially ones who you think this will touch their lives. And um, yeah, like the video and just if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments and we'll try to go back and view them later. So, um, so much, uh, Daniela, thank you so much. And we'll look forward to seeing you again uh, sometime in the near future. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds Bye. great. Thank you. Have a great night, you guys. Or a great day. It's still, well, it depends on where you're at, I guess. So you have a good night, young lady. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank shalom, shalom. You, you betcha. Bye. You betcha. Bye bye.
Thank you. 